today I want to share with you my property investing plan throughout 2021 and then getting into the future of how I'm getting started in the industry, what I intend to buy this year and how I want to grow the business going forward. I definitely make a few mistakes along the way, but part of it is proving that I can actually do the thing and if all else fails, the famous saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, take the tax loss and try again. I've been relentlessly studying and learning all about the world of property investing over the past two years. I was ready to hit the ground running, started viewing properties, and then a small virus took over the world and trapped me down in London where I live and work. I genuinely believe property is a really exciting industry where you can turn run down, uninhabitable houses into beautiful places that people can call home. Whether you go for a simple buy to let, house to multiple occupancy, flips, or building a new home from scratch. A few things that I want to cover is how I'm starting with £60,000, how I'm going to use that this year, and how it all forms part of my master plan that hopefully gives you a bit of inspiration on your own journey. But before we jump into that, if you could just take a quiet moment to destroy the like button as it really, really helps a small channel like mine grow and seen to more people across YouTube. And with that being said, on with the show. So since leaving university six years ago and moving down to the big smoke, I was lucky enough to get onto a graduate scheme for a large bank and work my way around the company, at the same time managing to save a decent amount of money. For the past few years, I've been saving about one to 2K every single month by living somewhat frugally, and I'm in a fortunate position to do that. But the money is irrelevant here. If you're able just to save a bit every single month, stick it away in stocks, crypto, or other assets over time, and you'll grow a nice little pot of money for your first place. And that's the aim of the game, to be in it for the long term. After buying my own new build flat in London, I made all the classic mistakes. New builds have a premium, so they're difficult to sell for a few years, it's hard to add value, and I bought pretty much at the time when the London market was very flat. I genuinely feel like one of the only people to have bought a flat in London and not gained any real value from it. But with all that being said, buying my first property in my own name did inspire me to get into the world of property investing. I started renting out a spare room to help pay off the ludicrous costs of my own London flat and to get a taste of what it's like to be a landlord. I listened to every podcast and I highly recommend Inside Property Investing by Mike Stenhouse or Property Hub by The Two Robs. Two great podcasts with years of content and more than enough inspiration and interviews with other people to successfully show you how to get started in the industry. But don't get me wrong, it's very hard to take that first leap and get into the industry. Trust your numbers and make sure that you don't overbuy and end up making a loss. And there are some people who flog expensive property courses that cost the same as a deposit on a buy to let. The terms can be confusing and I was a little bit unsure on how to work out all of the numbers. And over time, it's slowly gone in and I've documented all of that along the way here on the channel already. The big thing for me is really building up something for the future, a business that could support me full time, building something that I'm incredibly proud of and that also creates multi-generational wealth to live safely for my lifetime and have a nice comfortable retirement and be able to afford some of the nice luxuries along the way. As much as I love working in great companies, the nine to five life and working for a boss definitely isn't what I want in the long term. And I'm grateful that I'm thinking about this when I'm still in my twenties so that I can benefit in later years. If I really didn't start thinking about all of this now, it would mean many more years of commuting into London, which isn't fun. So here's my plan. I'm currently sitting on about 60,000 pounds with enough left over for an emergency fund. Most of it is tied away in a stocks and shares ISA in tech stocks, and that has been gaining nicely over about the past three years. Now the market, at the moment is incredibly hot and supply is still a little short and demand is through the roof, which means that property prices are selling for crazy amounts of money. And when I was looking at properties over the Christmas period, I found so many amazing projects that had so much potential for a BRR deal or a flip, but they ended up overselling for way too much money to the point where they could have made an extreme loss and I would have had to put lots more money into the deal to at least try and keep hold of it after refinancing. But my strategy is broken down into three phases, which I call the CCD strategy, capital, cash flow, and diversification. In the first phase, I'll be keeping my eye out for a nice little flip project over the next few months when restrictions are lifted. But if houses are still overselling and the market's still really hot, I don't want to hang around for too long waiting for that perfect deal that might never really come along. So instead, when times are tough, you have to think creatively, how can you differ yourself in the market. That might be having more capital to work out with in the beginning, pricing out all of the beginners like me, or you could look at commercial buildings or other strategies that aren't filled with what I describe as the Saturday morning club. This is essentially the people who bid blindly at auction after watching just a few episodes of Homes Under the Hammer. And all of this leaves me wondering whether you've smashed the like button yet. On a serious note, if I can't find a nice flip project, instead I'm going to focus on finding a nice done up house with around two or three bedrooms, but with an eye on the layout of the property to see if there's potential to add another bedroom. 
With all the properties, you'll notice on some floor plans that there's a front bedroom with two windows at each end of the room. And if it's big enough, it's easy to rip up the carpet, put in a stud wall and create two bedrooms. This way you could easily add 10 to 20K on the price of a property for a small refurb cost of about 5,000 pound for the stud wall, a new radiator, maybe some moving electrics around and then just the carpets and paint. We'll have to wait and see what comes up, whether I get lucky or not. The saying goes in the industry that it takes a hundred good deals to find the perfect one. But when you're working full time and three hours away from your investment location, it's a lot easier said than done. So for me, it's not really about finding the truly perfect deal and instead finding something that works and running with it because I'm in it for the long run. And the plan is to hold onto these for a while. At the moment, property prices are going up around 5% a year in Northern towns and cities. So there's good capital growth and rental income to be had. With 60K to start with, I'm aiming to look for around two projects this year, which means including leverage from the banks, that 60K will enable me around a quarter of a million pounds or 250K of purchasing power, which up north is more than plenty for two houses with leftover for accountancy, legals, purchasing costs, all the rest of it. So with additional savings over the next 12 months and building up my side freelance business, the aim is to then focus on phase two, which is cash flow. Now there's a few particular strategies that are cash flow heavy in the property world, which is mainly houses of multiple occupancy or serviced accommodation, short stay lets. Ultimately, I'd love to get into the student or young professional space for high-end HMO housing, which if you're not familiar with HMO housing, it's where you buy a house, you do it up to a designer standard and rent out the rooms on an individual basis to working professionals. HMOs can sometimes get a bad rep in local communities due to this lack of understanding. And that's mainly because a lot of people think that all HMOs are social housing and can sometimes attract trouble, which really isn't true. But with four to five bedrooms in a small multi-let style HMO, you can still cash flow more than over 800 pounds a month after expenses. And that isn't too bad. So my aim is to create a few of these over the next few years to bring greater cash flow into the business. And as I move into the third stage of the business in a few years time, this will be all about diversification. And one thing I'm very aware of is gearing myself too much in one particular property strategy. You never really know with regulation changing what could happen in the industry in the future. And we know that the virus wiped out a lot of Airbnb and service accommodation bookings. So your income can go from a lot to not a lot all of a sudden. So the dream is to take older commercial style buildings and divvy them up into mixed use. So you'd have, for example, a coffee shop on the ground floor. Then you might have a flat above or a HMO or service departments. And the opportunities here are endless. So if the rooms are empty or the commercial tenant leaves, the building as a whole still generates income. This three part strategy of building capital, then building cash flow, and then diversifying for me is a more solid way to build a successful property investment and development company that's sustainable and scalable over time. And with my day job at a bank, I already have the exposure and experience in commercial lending to understand all of the ins and outs of mortgages, but also the skills to effectively project manage, track budgets on a refurb, manage teams of people, as well as having the strategy and the thinking to make sure that I'm driving the business forward by working on the business rather than in the business. Property is a really exciting world. It's creative and it can be difficult at the same time with lots of challenges and problem solving. But Ultimately, it's this exciting dream along with building up a YouTube channel to document all of this that will allow me to build a really cool business that grows over time and contributes to a real problem in the UK with the housing shortage. It also means at some point I can think about going part time in the nine to five and eventually running the business full time, meaning I can control my time and freedom in a limitless business. So I hope you've taken some inspiration from this. Let me know down below what your property plans are and what you're looking to do. We're building an awesome little finance community here on YouTube. So there's always room for one more subscriber. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out my other videos like this one on the top here, which is my day in the life of a property investor. Or you can check out the one on the bottom, which is how I analyze BRRR property investing deals. So feel free to choose one of these and I'll see you on the other side.